question. Now we are going to put a E4 tip, that is a 400 micron tip. And this 400 micron tip is going to be used for the surgical procedures. So in this, the first step what we do will always be initiation because you're going to perform a procedure now under the contact mode. In a simple way for you to remember, you can do a procedure in a non-contact mode procedure with a non-initiated tip. For example, even for an after sulcer, if you are doing a PBM2, you can do non-initiation, whereas here you have to initiate. So initiation is going to be done by placing the tip in direct contact with the in direct contact with the articulating paper and that will result in a flashing there. So next we are going to start with the incision procedure. So sir is showing in a continuous wave mode, one watt. He's going to show in a continuous wave mode, one watt. Setting. So we are in a continuous wave mode, one watt, okay? So why we are showing this is, you are going to see the difference between a you're going to see the difference between a continuous wave mode and a pulsed mode later, okay? So you'll see how different the cutting is when it's happening, right? So first for now, we are seeing a continuous wave mode. So we are using a lower power in the continuous wave mode. So you can see how sir is moving it slowly so that the cutting happens, right? Other place, the incision repeat on the depth of so you need to do what is called layer cutting. Layer cutting means in the same place, you have to give repeated incisions. So unlike a blade, a laser will not chop off the tissue. So you do a gingivectomy or a crown lengthening or any procedure, which is a surgical cutting procedure, you cannot chop the tissue because it is number one, it is end firing tip. Only the end will work. The sides of the tip will not work. Number two is that you have to remove only layer by layer. So you give an incision, you repeat the same place, the same direction, again you move the tip in light contact mode. That is what will help for uh, increasing the depth of the incision in that particular place. So you can see that one, one thing with the continuous wave mode is that, that area has become slightly blackish in color. Yes, why? Because continuous wave will result in more amount of heat transfer. Now we are going to do an incision right adjacent to that, next to that continuous wave mode incision in a pulse mode, 50, 50, which 50 and F3 or on that. Yeah. So we are going to use a 50% duty cycle, but we need to use higher power. We need to use higher power. We can't work with one watt because it will not be effective. Two other products. So now we are going to do with a 50% duty cycle. Yeah, you repeat once more, Ram, can you fast move on? So we are doing the layer cutting again. In the same place, we are cutting again. Yeah, I think that's enough, you'll see. Now you can see here the difference between the continuous wave and the pulse mode. In the pulse mode, the zone of cut is lesser, but the amount of thermal damage is also shorted. shorted. Okay, this is how error sign will show. So you can see now there is some error in the machine. This is how an error will be shown. Whenever you have a problem in your machine, it will show you an error sign and you have to figure it out. There's some pairing issue which we'll sort out now. So the difference between a pulse mode and a continuous wave mode is that in a continuous wave mode, you have more depth of cutting, more volume of cut, but 
the charring effect that is the heat transfer is more so there is some amount of charring which happens whereas in a pulsed mode the depth of cutting is slightly lesser it is more cleaner but the side the lateral heat transfer is also less so thermal damage is also less so that is what is the advantage of a pulse mode as a initial person who is working initially on a laser safer to always use a pulsed mode as compared to a continuous wave mode of operation